Welcome into the video. I'm your tech guy Wayne and today I want to walk you through the setup of the new Samsung Galaxy S24. I'm going to take you through the setup menu. We're going to just start from square one getting right through and then I'm going to show you how to transfer all your data over from an old phone. And I'm going to show you what things you'll, you can skip because honestly um, you don't want to use the Google uh, initial setup. You just want to jump right to the main screen and then you want to use the Samsung Smart Switch. That's the fastest way to do the transfer and to make sure you don't lose any data in the process. Now one important note, whenever you go through the menus here, pay attention to any of the menus that say optional. I never check the buttons for any optional features. I just do the things that are mandatory. Now, you can do the setup right now, but you know, I would tell you to just do it later. If you have your old phone and you're ready to do this, then by all means, you can start the process by selecting the Galaxy or Android button, or if it's from an iPhone, you'll want to hit iPhone or iPad. Okay, I'm going to hit setup manually. We're going to connect to a Wi-Fi network. All right, so it's preparing for mobile. I don't have a SIM card in this phone, so we're going to bypass this step as well. Now I believe if you have an eSIM, then you can use the transfer SIM option here to do that. But again, I'm going to hit set up later for that feature. Now once again, it's asking if you want to copy over uh, apps and data. Again, I'm going to hit don't copy right now. We're going to do that later. All right, I'm going to get my Google account information entered. All right, my Google account information is entered. I'm going to skip this for now. Hit I agree. I'm going to swipe up. Now I want you to notice here, I'm going to turn off the allow scanning. I'm going to turn off the diagnostic. I'm only going to enable the use location and technically I would tell you turn this off too and, and enable them one by one per app. Let's hit accept. Now here you can set up your lock screen if you want to have one on your phone. Uh, I'm going to skip this as well and set this up later in the settings. But if you want to do it now, um, you can select fingerprint or face recognition and it will just ask you to put in a pin code or a passcode first and then it will allow you to set those two things up. I'm going to skip that for now. Hit skip anyway. Now here it's, it's wanting us to set up the Google Assistant. I don't normally like to have this on but basically it is a hot cue so if the phone ever hears you say hey Google then it will start listening and then you can say, you know, you can give it commands. I don't like to have this enabled, so I'm going to skip this as well. Let's hit more. I'm going to skip this as well. I don't want Google Assistant to have the ability to bypass my lock screen password. So I just skipped that. Okay, make sure you stop and do this right now. Um, the Samsung account is super important and there are certain features on the phone that are tied to the Google account. So if you don't set this up, it will limit the features you can use on the phone. So um, I have mine tied to my Google account. So I'm just going to hit sign in with Google. And if you don't have an account, you'll simply tap on the bottom here, hit don't have an account or forgot password. And then it will walk you through the process to get yours uh, set up or get you logged back in. All right, so um, I was able to use my Google account and it was super quick. Now, once again, you'll notice there's a few things I'll have to uh, accept. And then there's a few things that are optional. I'm going to skip all these additional optional features. I only want to enable what is uh, what I absolutely have to agree to and we'll leave the rest blank. Now, it is trying to send a two factor authentication code just to make sure that um, this is my phone. So we'll get that code and that little ding, which sounds like an iPhone. It's kind of funny. That is my uh, ringtone for this phone. And, uh, but it is an Android phone. I'm switching from an S23. And, uh, but just thought it was funny to have the iPhone sound on the phone. All right, there we go. Okay, a few other things we need to agree to. And then the last thing is we're going to select the display type. If you want to have the dark theme enabled or light theme, that's up to you. I normally like to have the dark theme enabled because it does help slightly to save some battery life. So I'm going to go dark theme. We're all set. So um, 
in the first step, this was the first step of the video, simply just getting from the setup screen all the way down to the main screen. Now, next I wanna jump right into how do we start transferring all of our data from the old phone to the new phone. And thankfully, I'm coming from an old Samsung to a new Samsung, so this will be extremely smooth and quick. And I wanted to just show you what that looks like. Now, even if you're not coming from a Samsung, if you're coming from another Android phone, it will be pretty painless. And I want to show you exactly what you'll need to do to make this work. Start on the new phone, swipe down from the top, swipe down again. We're going to tap on the settings wheel. From here, you'll want to go down to the accounts and backup option and go to transfer data from device setup. And this will actually take you right to the Samsung Smart Switch app. And this will basically get the phone ready for us to be able to pull data from our old phone and bring it over to the new phone. Now on my S23, I'm gonna swipe down from the top, swipe down again, go to the settings wheel. And I wanna to go to that same section, which is the accounts and backup. And I wanna to go to bring data from old device. Now, if you're not switching from a Samsung, if you're switching from a different um, Android phone, um, you won't go to the settings. Instead, you would go to the Play Store and just hit the microphone, Samsung Smart Switch. You're going to download this little S, the Samsung Smart Switch app, the blue S. And this will allow you to do the exact same thing from a non-Samsung phone. So I just want to point that out in case you're not switching from a Samsung phone. We're going to hit more, hit allow. And now you'll see on the screen what we're seeing the same things. Okay, I'm going to receive data on the new phone and I'm going to send data from the old phone. And it's going to ask you, okay, is it a, a Galaxy Android phone or is it an iPhone? I'm going to hit Galaxy Android phone. And I want to do it with a cable because you can use the cable that came in the box and it will uh, transfer faster if you use a cable. So I would tell you, use the cable, okay? Use the cable. Hit cable, hit cable. So now it's going to say, okay, you want to use a cable? Plug in a cable. All right, let's plug in our cable. Here we go. You want to give it a few seconds for it to recognize the phone. Now this is a little tricky. Sometimes you plug the cable in and it gives you kind of a weird um, error. So you'll just need to switch sides of the cable. Plug that one into that one and that one in this one. And it works. So just in case you plug in the cable and it's saying, oh, it won't work. No problem. Just try that end on the other phone. That's it. We're going to hit connect. And now we are in process. So it's gonna look at the phone and it's now trying to see everything you have on the phone and then it wants to see, basically give you the option to select what you wanna transfer over. Now I wanna just transfer everything over because I don't have a ton of data on this phone. So this transfer is gonna be so easy for me. But you guys might run into a scenario where you have a lot more stuff on the old phone and maybe you don't have enough room on the new phone. So in that case, you'll have to hit the custom button and when you hit custom it will allow you to then pick and choose more specifically what you want to transfer over. In this case I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to hit everything and then I want to hit next. I want to make sure I hit all for text messages because I want to get all the messages that are stored on this phone. I'm going to hit transfer and at this point I'm going to get a couple of prompts and you know what? I just realized I misspoke earlier in the video, so it will copy over your Google accounts. It didn't used to do that, so I guess this is a new upgrade, which I'm happy to see. It will also take your Google accounts as well. So even better, Samsung Smart Switch is one of the best transfer applications on the market, and I really wish Samsung would open this up to for other carriers to use it, but it's a proprietary option they have so it is what it is but anyway the transfer has started and at this point there's nothing else we need to do 
Um, I have tapped the button that says keep the screen on because I just like to know where the phone is in the process and I'll kind of come back here and there to check to see how much time we have left but you know I had about 19 gigs of data and it's going to take about 17 minutes to move it all over so that is amazing and that's a reminder to you guys that's why you want to use the cable to do the transfer because it's much faster whereas with Wi-Fi that same 19 gigs probably would have taken more like 40 minutes so just as an FYI we will jump back as soon as the transfer is complete and you can see what it looks like on the other side all right our transfer is now complete and all you need to do when you get to this screen is just simply hit done and to verify that your transfer went successful when you hit the home button so as you can see everything has switched it pulls the wallpaper it's gonna pull our uh, uh, call log if we go to text messages they'll all be there um, it mirrors everything identical and this is one of the best parts um, especially when you can go Samsung to Samsung it's really great when you pull from another Android to Samsung it does get just about everything but this is always the cleanest when you go from one Samsung to another so we're gonna simply disconnect the phones here and the last few little uh, things I'll need to adjust are just simply um, changing like or uh, excuse me updating my fingerprint sensor and setting up the uh, face recognition but basically our transfer is done so the last few things I want to walk you through in terms of the setup. So we've gone through the main screen, we've transferred all of our data. So the last things I want to show you to do are, so how to set up that fingerprint sensor now that we have all our data switched. We'll want to go to the settings, so swipe up. And we're going to go to the settings icon and you'll need to go down to um, security and privacy. And then I will need to first set a lock, set a screen lock. So I'm going to tap on set lock. And here's the thing. If you want to set up a, uh, a fingerprint or face recognition, you still always have to have one of these primary options set up first. So I'm going to set up a, uh, a pattern. So tap on pattern. And here I'm going to set a, a pattern code to unlock the phone. So I'm just going to do an L. Hit continue, do it again, hit confirm, and now that's set up and ready to go. Now it is going to ask you, okay, uh, on the lock screen, when the phone is obviously locked, do you want it to show content from your apps or do you want it to hide them? Um, depending on the type of work that you do, it might require you to have to hide it in case any sensitive information shows up on your lock screen. It can't be viewed by someone who would grab your phone. In this case, I don't really care, so I'm going to keep it to show content. I'm going to hit done. And now that this is done, I can go to fingerprints and I can program a fingerprint. I'll just have to put in that little security code first. And then I'm going to follow the prompt. So I'm not going to do it on screen. You're going to just simply hit continue and it'll just have you place your finger on the fingerprint sensor in the center of the screen to program it. It takes a couple of seconds and uh, you're good to go. So that's how you set up your fingerprint sensor. And if we go back, if we go to lock screen again, if you go to biometrics, you can select fingerprints or facial recognition. Okay, so there's that. Now this should have pulled all your emails over from your old phone. For whatever reason, if it missed an email, if you'd like to add an email address to the phone, the easiest way to do it is by going to the Gmail app okay you're gonna hit got it now it's gonna show the current email addresses that have moved over and you can simply tap add another email address to add uh, an additional one now one thing that a lot of people don't know is that Google will allow you to add an email that is not a Gmail so as you can see on the screen you have an option for Outlook Hotmail live Yahoo so you can sign into other email types that are not Google you just have to select the appropriate option here and if you run into the scenario where you don't see your um, special email type on the screen you have two options one option is to hit other you can put in the email address put in the password and it'll try to walk you through the setup sometimes it doesn't always work so here's my fail safe option I'm gonna hit the home button I'm gonna to go to the Play Store 
And what you need to do is tap on the search apps at the top. Now, put the at symbol and then whatever your email type is. So for example, I have an old AOL email address that I use for certain things. And guess what? I didn't see AOL on the Gmail screen. So I'm just gonna go to Play Store. I'm gonna put in at AOL.com and I'm gonna search. And now it's gonna show me all the apps that are compatible with AOL.com. And then I can choose another app to download that I can then use to sign into my AOL account. And look, I probably wanna use the stock AOL app that might be the best way to go. So whatever your email type is, whether it's at sbcglobal.net or at packbell.net, whatever it is, um, if you're having trouble signing in through Gmail, just simply come here, put the at symbol, put in the end, and this will suggest an app that you can use to sign into that email type. So that's how you sign into your email. And the very last thing I wanna show you is in the store, right here. So one thing Samsung does um, on all their newer phones is they don't put all of the um, Samsung built apps on the phones anymore because they're trying to give you more space for your own apps. But they have a ton of apps that they do create that are very helpful to have. And so to find the um, Samsung exclusive apps that you can download for your phone, you'll wanna go to the Galaxy Store. This is a different app store. So this is the Google Play Store. This is the Samsung Store. And this is where you find other apps you can download on your phone and all the apps are safe, you're good. So you're gonna go to the upper right corner, hit the magnifying glass, and simply type in Samsung. Hit the search. And this will show you all of the Samsung um, specific apps that they have put on their phones over the years. So if you were a big fan of the Samsung email app, guess what? You can simply download it right now by just hitting that little down arrow to download it. There is the Samsung Kids app as well, Samsung Music app. So anything that you see a little play icon next to, that means it's already on the phone. But if it has a little arrow pointing down, that means you can download it to the phone. So this is just a really... Um, an additional step I recommend to see all the other Samsung exclusive apps and see if there's anyone specifically that you've used in the past that you would like to have on this new phone. So I just scroll through. There is a, um, there's a video app as well. Samsung Flow is a great app for uh, linking your phone to your PC. So that's a great one as well. And the, the video app, okay, this one is already downloaded, so we won't have to reinstall it. So anyway, those were just a couple of additional um, steps I think are good to take to um, finish the setup of your phone. So guess what? We've transferred all of our files, our email is set up, we're signed into our Google so we can download apps. So at this point, your phone is now set up and ready to go. The last thing you'll need is simply a great pair of headphones. And I'm gonna plug these JLab headphones that I've been using for the past couple of weeks. Really cool branded headphones, really inexpensive. These are under $30. And guess what? It does come with the cable to charge them right underneath. You can plug it into your computer or any uh, USB wall plug. And they have great bass. So if you're in the market for some good headphones, check out these, I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, other than that guys, video is done. Hope you guys enjoyed it, hope you found it helpful. If it was, hit that like button down below. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.